The index reports that inflation rose 8.6% in May. Now, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, this is the highest increase since 1981. And the crazy part of it is, inflation hasn't affected everything, but it has affected everything that Americans are spending their money on. Things like gas, utilities, rent, groceries, and really everything. With inflation steadily increasing, Americans fear that a recession might be coming. If you're brand new to my channel, my name is Austin Zayback. I'm a real estate agent, a real estate investor, and uh, I'm somebody that is studying the market every day, trying to figure out what in the world is going to happen and really, what are we facing? Like, what should we expect and how should we ultimately get prepared? So a lot of people think that things are only gonna get worse and I'm gonna talk to you about what exactly we should expect over the next couple of months. So according to Bloomberg Economics, inflation will mean the average US household has to spend an extra $5,200 this year alone, which equates to $433 per month more than last year. And MarketWatch.com reports that rising food and energy prices also add to the cost of doing business for many companies ranging all the way from grocers to restaurants to airlines and even fertilizer producers. And they're passing all of those costs on to the end consumer. Well, you've all seen this one, but gas prices have jumped to record highs again. The cost of gasoline climbed 4.1% in May, and they accounted for a big chunk of the increase last month in the overall cost of our living. Gas Buddy actually said the average price of a gallon of gas in the US topped $5 for the first time ever. Diesel averages to $8 a gallon, and remember this, that almost everything is transported on diesel. I've also personally noticed that food costs continue to climb and rents have gone through the frickin' roof, okay? Now, we're likely to also see another big increase in June, so the question really becomes, like, what exactly is being done to alleviate our pain? Well, the Fed is going to be raising interest rates to ease inflation and slow the economy. So obviously change happens over time, and unfortunately for the time being, we kind of just need to continue to pay these high prices even though our incomes aren't on the same trajectory, which I guess in turn takes an effect on consumers, which in turn hurts the overall economy. So CNN Finance reported that the Dow falls nearly 800 points as inflation hits a 40 year high. And according to Yahoo Finance, stocks have sold off in a really big way with all of the heightened uncertainty around the outlook of the Fed's overall policy a war in Ukraine, prolonged supply chain issues, and pandemic-related lockdowns in China. Investors are also analyzing how much inflation is going to be weighing on consumer demand, the main driving factor, of course, of the economy. However, depending on when you're watching the video, investors are hopeful that this will be a huge week for stocks since it's the S&P quarterly rebalance and larger traders will have the opportunity to get in or out of the market and kind of reposition themselves. The Fed also has their next policy setting meeting this week as well. And during these meetings, the committee kind of reviews and assesses the risks to its long-term goals and sustainable economic growth and probably a whole lot more. So investors will be waiting on that and the consumer price index report as well. So guys, I would use this opportunity to prepare for a possible recession and a stock market crash. The fact is, it doesn't matter what's going on in the stock market and whether or not it's plummeting or we're in for a recession now, six months from now, or 12 months from now. What does matter is that we need to make sure that your cash flow is 100% secure, okay? If you're an investor, you know that our portfolios are safe and diversified, right? To not only withstand the volatility, but that way we can prosper as well. Now, an upside to all of this is that if you're young and you're ready to invest, or even if you're a seasoned investor, this is honestly an incredible opportunity to get a very undervalued company as a part of your overall investment portfolio. We've all heard Warren Buffett say, be fearful when others are greedy and be greedy when others are fearful. 
For me, honestly, I'll be doubling down. You know, right now is a phenomenal time to buy, in my humble opinion. Um, I'm a big DCA guy, right? I like to dollar cost average into the market. So for me, you know, I see a potential recession as a great buying opportunity, right? When milk goes on sale, you don't sell all of your milk, you buy more, right? And I believe that that same thing is true when we see, you know, the stock market continue to go down. When we see, you know, real estate prices potentially go down, depending on where you live, right? When things go on sale, you buy more, okay? You don't sell everything that you have. And I think a lot of times we get in our own head and we get scared and we panic sell everything, right? And remember, you can't lose money unless you sell for a loss. So even if you overpaid for a stock or you overpaid you know, for the S&P 500 or for Tesla or even GameStop or whatever it is that you invested in, just remember that eventually it will recover, right? Bear markets do not last forever. So that would be my advice is obviously, you know, make sure you're positioned going into a potential recession or a down market to potentially buy more. It could be a great way to bring your average cost down. And therefore, when the market does eventually recover, which it always has historically, then you will obviously make your money back and hopefully a heck of a lot more. There you have it. My name is Austin Zayback, and uh, if you liked the style of today's video, definitely let me know. I'd love to do more on the housing market crash, you know, just the overall potential recession we're looking at, stock market crash, whatever it might be. I love to report the news. I love to just kind of talk, share my thoughts, my opinions, my ideas. So definitely comment down below and let me know what you would like to see more of. If you haven't already, I would greatly appreciate it if you would smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm, okay? Also, if you would subscribe if you have not already, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.